Hello, everyone. You're listening to Northern Flights, a Park Pro podcast keeping you up to date with the people, tournaments, and culture of disc golf in Canada and beyond. Consider becoming a patron today at patreon.com slash parkpro. Find us on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Today's episode is brought to you by Disc Golf Park. And now your hosts, Andre, Jesse, and Matt. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 36 of the Northern Flights Disc Golf Podcast. We got everyone in house now. Jesse's, couch. Jesse's back. Yeah. Not as much elbow space as we had before. That's all right. We, uh, we, uh, the trade off is worth it. So I don't even know what, like, I heard that you were gone, and I was like, why is he gone? What were you doing? So for Christmas this year, Caitlin and I got all like our parents' experience type gifts. So we got Caitlin's mom tickets to the Book of Mormon in Toronto, and Caitlin and I flew down, spent the week with her, went to the show, did some mooching around, had a nice time, kind of just getting away from town. Nice. Yeah. Did you play any disc golf out there? I did. I played in Paris, Ontario. Can't remember the exact name of the course, but they were having as good a weather as we were. So it was all all grass plus five. Had a great time. I uh, didn't bring any discs with me, but luckily I've got a friend in Hamilton. We had a little four disc head to head round. Smoked them by six strokes blind. No big deal. <laughs> all out on the. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it was. Actually, he didn't have any disc mania in his bag, but he had an alpaca, which we all know is a P two mold. We walked up to the first hole and it was like a 10 foot wide tunnel shot and he hit like the second tree and I put it 10 feet. And I was just like, what did you expect? You gave the disc mania guy a P2 <laughs> and challenged him to head to head. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what the weather you're talking about because it's been warm, but there's still been a lot of snow on the, on the ground here. I think they've had that weather for longer than we have. Yeah. yeah. No, it was beautiful. I ended up taking layers off. Nice. Yeah, it's like it's like nice and warm here, but it just means it's sloppy, wet. Yeah. Ugh. It's spring conditions. It, it felt like March today. It's like, you know when you go to the ski hill at the end of the season and you can wear your shorts and a t-shirt <laughs> at the ski hill? That's what it feels like right now, which is fine. That's good disc golf conditions, but it's, uh, yeah. No sport is fun with soggy feet. No. Still got to still got to wear rubber boots here. So, competitive grape crushing. Grape crushing. Yeah, like how they did in the old days. I think that's a good cue. <laughs> yes, he's drinks of choice. Of day. Right? <laughs> Throwback to 2004. <laughs> you guys gonna have a sleepover and play some Super Nintendo later, or what? I sure hope so. I have to. I'm gonna be on a sugar high for the next couple hours. Yeah, we hit Costco on the way back into the city and sent Caitlin off to get a case of pop. We came back with a 36-pack of different crush flavors. And I was like, who's going to drink this? She's like, me, obviously. It's like those, those giant flats, right? Yeah. 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 I remember, it's like, I don't know if it was soccer tournaments or or like maybe youth groups from church back in the day. And you'd always go to those and they'd have like just two or three flats because they, they, knew, they knew how to treat the kids. It's like the birthday party special for eight-year-olds. Yeah. If you're looking for uh, non-traditional players pack items, by the way, yes. assorted crush flavors. Soda. It's never a bad idea. Crowd favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, we got uh, we got some disc golf to talk about today. Actually, um, I got a good tie-in for that. Speaking of the crush, because we knew um, Christy and Carrie worked on the crush women's tournament. Um, over the week, I was in contact with Mindy, who runs the Canadian women's event. And I wanted to shut this out early so everybody hears it. Um, they are fundraising right now. So I'm trying to give them a shout out. If you can volunteer your time uh, or if you have anything you can possibly do to support them, whether it's sending a couple of discs for the raffle or uh, if you have any connections in the industry, you can give a ring to support the Canadian Women's Event. If you don't know, the Women's Global Event only runs every second year now. And so the Canadian Women's Event fills in that middle year, keeps the momentum going. And I really think it's one of the greatest avenues to grow the sport right now. If your mom plays, they're going to take their kids to the park. If your kids are playing, they're going to grow up with disc golf. And I really think it's a great, great, great way to keep the momentum we got in COVID going and keep the growth of the sport up. So sign your wife up, sign your sister up, 
grow women's disc golf. Where yeah. is it? Uh, the Canadian women's event grows everywhere, just like the women's global. Yeah. Um, I believe Mindy herself is the director for the entire uh, program in the country. So uh, hers is in Ontario, mm-hmm. but uh, there will be a, f- a few running in British Columbia. And I know there's there's like Edmonton has one, uh, Calgary has one, uh, Cramper has one, and the only other one that I can think of. No, there's Cam one in Camloops as well, and then another one in at Raptors, I believe. Those are the ones I know of. And actually, might not even be at Raptors. It might be at that Mary's Farm course. I'm not 100 percent sure. If you know, let us know in the comments. Let everyone know in the comments because um, this is definitely one that you want to get out there and 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 get out like let people know because it is really such a. I, I've photographed them before and done some video work for some, and it's really such a welcoming group. And if you know anyone that's even thinking about throwing a disc, doesn't matter the age that you could be, um, you know, junior. And you'd be senior like there's so so many welcoming people in that group and and you can find a tournament near you so definitely look into it um keep uh, i believe they have a social media page as well so yeah get in there i believe it's a zero dollar event as well because uh, sponsors look after everything pdj waves the fees um and i think the one we missed is calgary will likely have one because i think um brenda page and jody rooney have run one in yeah. the past yeah, yeah. totally um yeah get signed up with those i believe a lot of them run in may and, and may already start uh, registration may be open for them so definitely look uh check out disc golf scene for those uh we have a rescue ratings coming up too i still have to set a registration date uh, i currently i think i have it set for a week or so from now but i want to dial some other stuff in and, and make sure that uh, casey's got his tournament all online so if you're interested in that go check those out on disc golf scene the locations and dates are correct uh, we still have to work out pricing and whatnot because we might uh, play with some pricing structures this year to make it kind of fun and interesting and test some stuff out. So uh, definitely a good time to get out and get uh, get some ratings on the board for a low cost. And um, yeah, all those are always fun. That's one thing that I wish, and I don't know who would do it, but just when registrations open, that there's somewhere that they announce them. Like even... At pro tour level like champions cup was just uh opened up for 10 10 plus i got one of the spots my playing this year not having to play a playing tournament or a qualifier so that's that was a little stress off my off my neck so um i think there was like 35 spots left and it filled up in three minutes Whoa. with 10 10 plus players so um that that one's gonna be fun i'm gonna i'm looking forward to seeing even just to see how the field does for is it four or five rounds? Four rounds. World is the only one that's five rounds, but mm-hmm. four rounds at um, Northwoods Black, so that'll be fun. But registrations, like last year, so many people missed the registration to Champions Cup just because there was no information about it. It, it was a PDGA event, so it wasn't through the Disc Golf Pro Tour announcements. Um, but then a few days ago, I got a message from Stu. And he was like, BC, BCO registration is open. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> like, yeah. Where, where was that announcement? So I don't know if you're missing something, but if you click follow on Disc Golf Scene, you get an email 24 hours before and another email, I think, like but, I mean, before. So you you like, got to know when it goes online on Disc Golf Scene, though. Like, so then I have to go in and follow all the tournaments that I'm planning on registering for. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes those tournaments don't exist on disc golf scene like a lot of the pro tours don't even exist on the pro, on the disc golf scene right now like later in the year i understand what you're saying but but how do you get a notification then you get a notification for every tournament no but i mean how do you tailor like, it the a tiers in canada are like some scope of i want to know when the biggest tournaments those registrations go live sounds like a good job for a certain podcast to start thinking about this stuff <laughs> Hmm. And like, like I'm sure, uh, or I mean, does BC Open have like um, tiered registration social media accounts that are, or is like BC Disc Golf making those announcements? I think they're probably on it, but no, I I don't think it's even worth talking about. I, that, I know you make a good point. I think if you could narrow like a field for those notifications, I want everything in British Columbia, or I want everything within 200 kilometer radius, or everything A tier and above. 
and yeah, you wouldn't get so many notifications and it would really keep you in the loop. Because I mean, how many A tiers are there in Canada? Six. I, I would imagine they would want people to know when those registrations go live. So like why? I, I think it's funny at the A tier level, I don't think they worry about it too much because a lot of them know they are they're going to fill up, right? right? So I mean, that's, I mean, that's a purely hypothetical, but um, just so you know, TCO, and just so our listeners know, TCO registration, tiered registration has started already. So okay. um, depending on what. Yeah. So it's women's and juniors, I believe, and then age protected and then sponsors and then general. Um, I don't know the exact dates off my offhand, but I think it's the 12th, 12th or the 15th that opens like for everybody. But yeah, I think juniors and age protected is already open. Um, but yeah, like I just, I don't know. I don't know if like, I don't, use disc golf scene enough like i literally just use it to register for the events like i don't look at it I'm, I'm not searching for events through the database i just know well even like pro tours you get taken to that page through a different link so it's not i'm not searching through it through disc golf scene i'm just it's like a third party thing mm -hmm. Um, where I think, yeah, I don't know who needs to do it or what's the best way to do it, but I think people need to know when these registrations open when it, and it's not just word of mouth, like one of the TDs texting you or DMing you saying you should <laughs> register to my event because it's open now. Oh, you're right. But I, I find this time of year I'm on disc golf scene probably two, three days a week. You know, just checking, making sure I've got all the events followed, whatever, for like a, you know, a two-week period. And then the later in the year events, maybe I'll be back on there a bunch more in April to catch the August-September events. Um, so we guys, talked about this in Discord. Do you want to get into that or do you have something else? No, I was just going to touch on that. Um, do you guys get this? Do you guys um, have the habit of when you open up your Chrome browser or whatever and you are just like automatically without even thinking it, even though you're meant to do something else, you just you have somewhere that you go automatically? You just click it. That to me is disc golf scene. Like I don't know what it is. Anytime I open up my my Chrome browser, it's disc golf scene. And I'm like, what am I doing? I don't need to be on disc golf scene. I don't even register for events anymore, and I still do it. <laughs> it's just it's one of those weird things. But uh, yeah. yeah, like your top six at the front. Yeah. Mine's Gmail. I'm I'm one of those animals that just tabs. always has tabs open, like fifteen tabs. I'm, and I'm disc a, golf scene I'm is a one of them. Monster as well. Yeah. That's fine. Like I want to say I have like 24 tabs open on, on my phone. <laughs> the phone ones are tough because you just, you go it, you go into, you go into your browser and you just click the plus button like automatically. Yeah. And like some things I just want to keep like as a reminder, it's just like looking at buying a pair of shoes or something and I have that tab open and it's just like, I don't want to make a note or go out of that. To, Recipes. Yeah. I don't use anything really. Right. Screenshots work like a hot day. <laughs> I really don't like having extra stuff on my photos, though. Like, I just want to keep that streamlined. Not that I even, like, really use it all that much. Like, not that I'm taking a million photos, but... Phone clutter is a thing. I, I close all of my apps. I close all of my tabs. I do all that stuff. And then I borrow Caitlin's phone. I look, and I go to change to a different tab, and she's got, like, 42 apps open. I'm like... Yeah. I don't care if you're doing something. I'm closing this for my own sanity for this 15 seconds. Anyway, while you're looking, we did talk about this a little bit uh, in Discord. Uh, if you didn't know already, we have a Parked Pro Discord server um, where our patrons and tournament directors and our friends are already hanging out and talking. And coincidentally, where we're actually recording this podcast right now. Uh, and the other day we were talking. Uh, yes. And we have a horn. <laughs> Yes, nice. Um, anyway, we were talking about this the other day about how the disc golf scene environment definitely feels kind of like something out of 2004. Yeah. Like the search is archaic. It also doesn't look great. Mm -hmm. The way you register for things doesn't feel great. And I know that UDisc um, has now lost their partnership with the PDJ. And we were thinking of different avenues for UDisc to grow. And they already have a page where you can find tournaments near you, leagues near you, and things like that. And I really think that that would be a great way to modernize the registration process. You can search by distance comfortably, easily, and not have all these drop-down menus, fields here and there. Um, 
Yeah, and I mean, they do have the events page and everything already. So if you are, are like scanning through UDISC and you're looking at the map, which is, I mean, it's one of the most used things by me. I probably look at the map more than I actually record rounds. But they have listed events at each course. And this is what I did with the Rusty ratings last year because I wanted to just see what it, what the interface was like and how it was to set up events and see if that was like an avenue to hopefully get more people to sign up. And I mean, it's tough. It's a really tough thing because, you know, they go on to the UDIS currently, they see the event there, but they can't register there. They have mm-hmm. to go to Disc Golf Scene. So you can put a link in and then either it'll obviously take you there, but it's just one extra step. So like you're saying, that is definitely something that uh, hopefully they're looking into. I also just, it baffles me that Disc Golf Scene has like monopolized that where it's like you're paying whatever the it's essentially just a tax or whatever. Like a 3% processing fee or something. Yeah. yeah. Like and for like somebody who's buying a tour card, that's 3% of your tour card cost. And that's not even like registering to an event. That's something completely separate specifically for the, the pro tour. I just don't know how that, how disc golf scene or how they haven't gone away from that. Is it owned like, by the nice. PDGA? Like it used to be a separate thing, but is it not owned by the PDGA or is it just like kind of loosely affiliated with them? It is fully owned by the PDGA now. And, and that's one thing um, that like you have to spend money to keep those servers running. And so that 3% processing fee is making it so we don't have pop-up ads and junk like that. And I think I would rather pay, you know, over the course of a year, 12 bucks versus having a even clunkier experience than we already have there. Fair. But I mean, so, I mean, when you're paying three, $400 per tournament for like bigger tournaments, a grand for a tour card comes out to a bit more than 12 bucks. Um, and a lot of people just don't really understand. Like, I feel like if it was more explicitly there to say, this is why, because like, I think, yeah, I think it ended up being, or I don't, I don't know if this was a separate issue with the, the tour card, but there was some kind of extra like $100 like shipping and handling fee or something that they obviously wasn't, weren't, wasn't using it for shipping and handling because you're not sending them anything. It's just for your tour card. Like it's a virtual thing. But I, th- I feel like part of it was disc golf scenes cut of the registration administering it. That's funny. Cause yeah, with something like a tour card that goes back to the DGPT, which is not the PDGA. Yeah. But like I, I get it that it is nice that everything's in the same spot and you register for the same, like it, on the same interface for pro tour or your local league or C tier or whatever. But when it is so clunky and feels like it was in the nineties, like surely you can, up that and just make it a, a bit better of an experience. They don't have a, a true monopoly like handed to them by the PDGA. And this is the other thing that's interesting. Innova uh, has a company called Disc Golf United. Disc Golf United has its own registration thing. And it's very, very, very sparsely used and only in certain areas. Like I think uh, the Carolinas use it and almost nobody else does. It's the same with like Disc Golf matrix or metrics metrics yeah. and so that's what i was, I was going to get into disc golf united is not a better platform and it yeah. is no less clunky mm-hmm. and i was going to ask you about metrics because you probably had a bit of experience with it in europe yeah. a lot of i mean sweden was even different because they had their own like udisc scoring app that then they used it for registration as well but that was super streamlined super easy um so i, I don't know why it's so hard not to do that for the PDGA, just like through the PDGA app that it's, you're going through this other website. You need a different, um, like user profile. Um, and like, it, it is nice that everything's connected that you can like click on people's names and it pulls up their P, PDGA, um, site, but I feel like they can just integrate that into the PDGA website where, like it's the same thing with the pro tour and, and their new scoring thing where now since it's not UDISC and UDISC owns all the 
stats. stats and all that, that they can have everything in house and it can be on the website. And it's not like this, um, like satellite. Yeah. Detached. You have to go back to UDisk live or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Cause I think it just, more people would be like on board if it is just all, all one app, you don't need three or four apps to play disc golf. Yeah, I think that like as a new disc golfer, before ever playing your first tournament, you have U disc already because you're using it to find courses and stores. Yeah. And I think that these people find disc golf scene later by talking to other disc golfers. If it was right there in your hand in the next tab over, I think you might see more tournament registration more quickly without having to yeah. somehow navigate the social Is scene. It all the um, in or indirect advertisement, like it's like people just stumble upon it. It's like, oh, tournaments. Oh, I can re- register for right here. Yeah, and like I don't, I don't know if UDisc needs to be that because like, a lot of people are like, oh, what's UDisc going to do? Like, I think UDisc is going to be fine. Like, they have like they are the platform for finding a course. Or if anybody's just ha- like having a casual round and keeping score. Who's using any other platform? Nobody. And people were worried about the price hike because now it's 27 or something, CAD. That's like $2.25 a month yeah. to find disc, any course in the world, track your stuff, do your throw measuring. Not that I use any of it actually anymore, yeah. but yeah. But I mean, I, I get it. Like you see 30 bucks and you're like, oh, I'd save 30 bucks and not use Like I, I get it that 30 bucks might be on the price year end for like just every like kids, our kids, yeah. our kids, kids gonna shell out thirty bucks a year to use an app that keeps keeps score and and like sure, it's kind of counterintuitive where you want you just to have that impact of this is how you find courses. This is like you just envelops all that, but yeah, I I don't love that it costs thirty dollars a year, but. I also don't think they're they're worried about going under. No, like because you, like, of it. You're probably right about the kids thing, but everybody, maybe even everybody that's on this call right now, has one streaming service too many that they don't look at enough that they keep paying for. Udisc is two months of forgetting to cancel Crave TV. Yeah. Like it's, I, yeah, and also like, don't underestimate the free version because like if you're just looking to take scores and that's all you want it for. You just want the basic stuff, like, it's awesome. It's perfect for that. And they've expanded on it because it used to be that you can only keep track of your last 10 rounds, and I think they made it unlimited now. So, I mean, I ha- I've only had the Pro for since I pretty much got it, but so I don't I had, don't really have any experience with what the free version is like. If you're one of those uh, Udisc users that only uses the free version, what is your experience? That's you? I forgot that there was a free version because we got Udisc uh, with our through membership. yeah with the membership. membership so it was like yeah i don't know if i've really experienced the free free version yeah i i don't pay for it because i don't use the extra features so why would i i really use it to find courses i use it for the map and i don't use it for much else when i play like because we're also pretty isolated i'm not like trying to set the high score on certain courses or whatever too frequently and if i'm playing alone i keep score in my head and i'm taking extra practice throws anyway it's just not something that interests me yeah, one yeah. thing i will say that they took away the ability to measure throws without the pro which used to be included with the free or maybe when i had my membership and i think that would be useful to some people in areas that had accurate gps yeah i uh i was probably i was thinking about canceling my my uh you disc and then the other day i got the bill so gonna happen yeah because <laughs> i'm a pro user for another year you're in but uh yeah that's you disc and uh you disc in a nutshell i'm i think they should definitely if they can incorporate disc golf scene like why if you own the website why can't you just copy the code put it on pdga.com even throw it on the app like you log in with the app like have that information and then it just goes, uh, you know, click to register, and then maybe it takes you to your PayPal or whatever, so you don't have to give PDG your credit card number permanently. But um, yeah, why not mix that in? Why not? Why not mix in your PDGA fees too? Like, do everything from the app. 
I think more people would use the app and it's like right there and then you can literally get notifications on your phone. Hey, a, PGA a, app. a tier in Canada going out for registration. Beep. Who actually uses the PDG app for anything? It's great, man. It's you great. Know what? The PDG live app is awesome. Rules. You can search any rule. You're just like, I don't know what the actual rule is on this. On the course, you just click the search function. Yeah. You can find the exact rule and what the wording is. So it comes in handy for those types of things. So and, I mean, I don't know if it's different than like when you're playing a tournament. Is that the same app that you're talking yeah, about? PDGA yeah, PDGA Live. It's got your scoring. Like scoring. You, you sign in, you do your scoring live, and then it's also got a it, searchable rules book built in. It also, yeah, it also, I mean, I don't know if it's up to the tournament director to load all that information, but if there's a caddy book, yeah. all the all the rules of each hole, like if you're looking at the scores for the hole, there's, yeah, I don't know if it's like an info button that you click and then it gives you all the, OB. the caddy, caddy book notes for that hole. On you know, the app. I will say, it's annoying to put all that stuff in. Okay. I I would imagine, but... I cool From feature. what I remember, and I'm curious because this will be a good good uh, test when, when we have the Rusty Rainies come up. I think it saves it all, though. So, like, you could... The next time you select that course, it has all those rules mm-hmm. already written. Okay. So, you only really have to do it the first time you set up a course on the back end of the PDGA events. Okay. So... Um, but I could be wrong about that. I, that does just from what I remember. I, I think I remember selecting Raven's Nest, and I think even notes from from Rumble came up on it. So it's possible, yeah, yeah, for the OBs and stuff. Yeah. See, I get all that, but I can also open a browser tab on my phone, and all PDJ Live is, and the rule book and everything is, and those notes are all right there. And I don't have home screen clutter from having an app that's just an instance website. I just don't have many apps on my phone. They're mostly surrounding sports and disc golf, so <laughs> I don't usually don't have to look too far to find them. Yeah, but it's the same for the Pro Tour app. It's like who, like what, what is even on the Pro Tour app? It, There's an app other than knows. like other than DGN the the video. Say DGN. Are you talking about DGN or a Disco Pro Tour app? Well, that's my point. It's like, <laughs> is there a Pro Tour app? So Not like, yet. how are people? Like, okay, you disc live. That was a bit weird because, like, some tournaments are on there, some tournaments aren't. You have to, like, go through a little tab. Um, but, like, I would imagine a lot of people are following the scores on UDISC because that's how it's been advertised. But now that UDISC is gone, where is that going to be on PDGA Live? And I was going to say, like, when often, for especially for Canadians, because you can't find them on UDISC Live. UDISC Live is great for the, the Disc Golf Pro Tour, but for Canadians, when I wanted to know, you know, how Jesse was doing when he went out to uh, Ontario or anywhere else, you know, you go there and, and you can check it all on the PDG Live. Uh, Roll to the bottom. Find it's, me. it's perfect. Yeah. Luke Humphreys is four down through six at the Bottle Lake Open presented by IDEO Sports in Christchurch, New Zealand. Birdie, birdie, How's par, Sol- birdie, birdie, Sullivan par. Sullivan Tipton doing? Let me open up full MPO scores. Sullivan Tipton is, uh, he might have flown home. Well, because <laughs> he was he was advertised to play like every event over there. And he has he didn't play the first two. And I saw a little bit of footage of him. I don't know if it was a skins or... But I, then I checked like what tournaments he was registered for, and it was this bottleneck open. So I was like, "Yeah, so he is there or was there." But I don't know if it was an injury or him just mm-hmm. wanted to learn his new DGA discs. But interesting. But hey, D, DGA's team this year, Big crazy. Time. I'm excited to see what they do. Do well, Tristan like, Tanner won. Yeah, was that Shelly Sharp or Maricopa? No, um, but I mean, like, yeah, keeping Cole Rodolin, he's got as high a ceiling as any of the young guys. And then they just signed like all of the like borderline up and comer kids. Like they're all like low young twenties and yeah. And then was it Macy Villadias as well? Yeah. I think they signed, signed her. Yeah. That, yeah, I don't, I don't want to get into that, but 
I don't think Dynamic was <laughs> came out looking too good in that scenario. Um, they have a way. DD has a way. I don't know why, and I don't know how, but DD just has a way to make the slightest misstep and make it look way worse than it was. Like obviously, it's a we're gonna get into it now, right. but right. like I understand, like it's a it's a smart financial decision from pure business that like. You're playing an abbreviated tour. You don't bring as much value as you did before. You won't be able to make these appearances, blah, 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 blah. But also, you can scratch all that out and write, fired the pregnant lady. And suddenly, all the logic just falls right out. Yeah, because, I mean, obviously, they didn't release any, like, details, but maybe they offered her 80% or 70% of the, the her rate of last year. Um but I'm curious, like, are people just looking for the same contract and not getting it? Like, we see Lisa Fakus go open bag. Um, Chandler, Kramer. Chandler Kramer go open bag this year. Gavin Rathbun open bag and, like, was throwing it out on uh, social media saying, I might not even tour this year unless I can get support. And it's like, Gavin Rathbun, and I'm sure he went through an injury and – had a tough time coming back from that, but was also like a very like rising star on the pro tour. Um, I have a hard time believing he didn't have the means to tour or couldn't swallow his pride and take, take a, a deal that was smaller than a, like, I don't know at what point these guys were. And like, maybe it was just companies saying, no, we've allocated the money somewhere else or no, we can only give out like maybe everybody was looking for a guaranteed deal mm -hmm. where there's some kind of salary um, involved and that wasn't available um, and everybody was just going, no, just going to be totally performance based and then disc sales and whatever. Um, but it's just, it's weird, weird to see so many people in that position. Um I think we, we get to talk about Gavin in particular for this one because you're right. He was an up and comer. I, what's the event that sticks out like Waco of like two, three years ago sticks out in my head. Maybe seeing him on coverage, hearing his name come up event after event. And as someone, I have to admit, I don't watch all the events. I don't keep up with it. My disc golf world exists here in Canada more than outwards. Uh, other than like the sponsorship deals right now, I might have heard Gavin Rathbun's name once in like the last two years. Yeah. But I mean, a lot of that was because he got, I think it was a shoulder, he got surgery, wasn't playing for a majority of uh -huh. the year, and played a couple pro tours, was absolutely nowhere um, in contention or even, yeah. And he was Whatever. a guy, he was a guy that DD like kept on salary too, while he was yeah. going through that. And then all of a sudden, yeah. a year or two later, and I mean, they, they don't even want him on the team healthy Adam, again. Yeah. Gavin Rathbun orbit enforcers that I know Kuba likes to throw. Um, so, I mean, he, he was getting the signature disc and all this. So it's like, I'm sure. And was it just DD saying we didn't get the payout or like the, the, payout. the return that yeah, return we, on ROI. we were looking at and just said, you know what? We can offer you the, like the bare minimum or whatever. Um, but like, if it's that, or not touring or like, and like I know his rating had dropped. So I think he was, um, planning on getting in on just purely like the rating based, uh, registration. So maybe it was just like, all right, maybe I'll just play a tiers and get my rating back up. So it's not a problem next year. Um, but yeah, like just like Lisa Fakus and Chandler Kramer, like, also, both coming from Lone Star. I know Lone Star had a, like, yeah. A lot of people are saying that there was a lot of drama behind the scenes. Um, but, yeah, just weird to see so many people in that, seemingly in that stage of, there wasn't a deal out there that I liked, so I'm just not taking a deal. Um, and I'm sure those they have those supplementary deals with, like, OTB East or whatever that was. I know a lot of people were saying that, saying yes to that but yeah it just feels like like a Chandler Kramer even though his game is very unique and all that it's very it's like the same with like Jake Wolf 
I just saw was it another round YouTube was like claiming him the most exciting disc golf player to watch. And it's like, it's just because he throws overhands every time. And it's just like something you'd never see. And it's the same with Kramer when he's just throwing forehands everywhere. Yeah, I think you can analyze it a bit. Like the Gavin Rathbun, I haven't seen a clip. I haven't heard a name. I haven't heard of whatever. If he had a signature disc, is that selling? If you don't know the name, you're selling it on the merit of the disc, not the merit of the player. It's the same. Like, I Have you seen a Kona Montgomery disc? In the wild, but I, I think she, she's crushing it in the into. states, though. I think she, like she's moving a lot of discs. That and that's my point. It's like I'm sure there's pockets where, like, yeah, I'm not seeing a lot of any other disc than what I'm um, throwing or what my friends are throwing on tour. But yeah, like those signature molds. Like a lot of people throw a. Is it, I can't even remember if it was an enforcer or a defender, but whatever. A lot of people throw that disc, and I'm sure a lot of people throw it not even knowing who Gavin Rathbun is or even if he, he's a real person. Or <laughs> It was another story. Like how, how, how about the, how the roaming Clamo thunder? Was. Yeah, and They dude. thought it was just like the Ken Climo rock was a – it was just like the name of the plastic or, or whatever. <laughs> and then they like met Ken Climo and was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Here it is. Yeah, see it? The guy with the ears? Is I don't, I don't suppose you did to something 12 times by any chance, Mr. Climo, did you? <laughs> <laughs> But I was going to get into that. Like um, Gavin Rathbun, who said, I, there's no reason to know his name now. And there was really no reason then other than a couple good showings. Lisa Ficus has been around the block and back again. And for people that have been in the game a long time, that name means something, whether she's there or otherwise. And I think that brings value. And then Chandler Kramer and Jake Wolf, whether they win tournaments or stand on the podium, they're producing content that makes for good advertising youtube reels clips whatever jake wolf throws a massive thumber over a tree yeah. or that like you'll never forget the roll that roller that kramer threw yeah. at european, european open, open. Yeah. never just right? because nobody would throw that shot and it's the same with like the jared stole thumber a whole 17 at waco, waco yeah. it keeps getting posted on on instagram and it's just like, like i get it that those like the amount of times people send me the philo brathwaite albatross know, the videos and it's just like have you seen this and it's like yeah <laughs> just the most watched clip of the sport of all time so there is always going to be that where it's like shock value and it gets views and that so it's just going to re recycle and that's why those like unconventional shock value players are valuable because they're gonna get shouted out on the live feed where it's like oh yeah Jared Stoll eagled full 17 again. You should be able to or go and watch that clip because it's amazing because nobody else does it. Um, so, yeah. But, again, it's just, it might just be where the market is and where the sport is, where everybody was getting these guaranteed deals a couple of years ago or where, whenever. And a lot of people's deals were coming up this year and they were like, oh, yeah, just going to, get my guaranteed salary again and maybe it wasn't on the table so i think a lot of people expected covid level growth to continue yeah. and like what i heard from some of the manufacturers and people involved in the business talking about these models and the graph and the this and the that yeah. and it wasn't what they ex wanted it to be you know the most optimistic rise didn't happen we're starting to level out and you have to trim the fat and when you're trimming the fat i can see gavin being a guy that gets trimmed yeah. Or getting offered like a, a product only with certain incentives contract. And if he doesn't think he's going to win an event or podium to get his cash bonus, yeah, why not throw whatever you want? Yeah. I, I also think uh, a lot of that cash is, you know, being diversified in, you know, to different, uh, different areas. I, I mean, Canada, I, the, the amount of players that got sponsored this year is uh, like way higher than I've seen in previous years. And sure, they might be entry level sponsorships, but you know the amount of yeah the amount of people I saw that announced sponsorships this year in Canada on both MPO and IPO side is is quite high. So I think a lot of these companies are seeing other markets, and trying to take the money that you know whatever they were paying Gavin, they could probably sponsor two or three players in Canada. Yeah. So I mean things like that, and and yeah, I think they're they're getting creative in, on those kinds of deals. Yeah, I think it, these types of sponsorships bring different things too. Like they've got enough people on 
who are to make clips and stand on podiums, right? The the little guys, the the me of the world people. I'm like a territory rep for a company, right? Like I've only thrown a buzz for the last four years because I'm a COVID golfer and Paul McBeth buzz was the most popular disc of all time. You're not going to let go of that disc unless someone puts it in your hand. So I can walk up, here's an MD1, they drop their dirty buzz and they like it. And that probably has a different type of value when that kind of pro tour player sponsorship market is super saturated already. For sure. And I do think there is there is that market where you do plug in somebody in a community. It does have the potential of just completely like a virus. Just like all of a sudden, the next two years, everybody in that town throws the same company totally what, um, what do you think happens in cranbrook if casey switched yeah. from prodigy right yeah because they look and like that's the thing too like someone to, to look up to or the, an opinion that you respect at the very least you know someone that doesn't get a stack of discs that they've never thrown and tells you it's the best thing ever go do it you go oh no i know about discs you like your buzz this one's a tick less stable with the grips better and then you know it, it works that way I hate to say the virus term with the Prodigy Street team, but it's like very, very well known in like Red Deer, I think it is. Is it Red Deer? Where like one person got on it, and then there's next thing you know, you blink and there's like six Prodigy Street team members, and everybody's throwing Prodigy. Mm -hmm. Or Casey gets signed by Prodigy in Cranbrook, and then suddenly people are interested in signing up for the Prodigy Street team, and there's three Street team members the next year, and it's, you know, pushing it out that way. It's um, for somebody like Gavin Rathbun, it's like it's also all these companies want to sign the new, less expensive 17 year old too. Because really, like outside of your top one or two players, a lot of what manufacturers are doing is just spreading a net of branding. And they're like, okay, we've got this uh, woman that's going to be top three every other event, and we're going to pay her like a full time salary keep her happy, keep her on the road. And then we've got like five or six people that you might see like one round every five tournaments or something like that. And that's just the net of like, you're just playing the odds of like, one of these people is going to be on camera at some point. One of these people is going to make a shot on camera. And if your choice in that group of people is between Gavin Rathbun, who did injure himself pretty badly, and like a 17 year old that throws 650 feet on Instagram, like, yeah, the, you, you might start picking up some of these young players and, and it's like putting a rookie in instead of that 30-year-old in, in the NHL who's playing on your fourth line because they're reliable and dependable professionals or you bring in your first-round draft pick and give them a shot. And I think we're starting to see some of that too. Like, yeah, I know who Lisa Fakus is. I've watched her play. She's great. When I started golfing, she was one of my favorite FPO players. But there's like five players coming in every year that are better than Lisa Fakus at this point. It's tough. I like you. Your point, because it kind of ties into everything. What's the best contract of the last few years we've seen? Probably Prodigy's contract with Gannon Burr. You know, you could spend a bunch of money to buy the best guy ever, or you could spend 5% of that and get 60% of the return. But, I mean, a Gannon Burr is not Not everyday guy. Yeah. But, I mean, that's where I think DGA is going to make a big splash this year because... They have six players that could be leading a tournament any yeah. other week. In general, I think I think Cole Radon is one of the best prospects in the game, and if he can get his mental game a little bit better, we yeah. we saw him crumble a few times when he could have been taking home you know tour events, majors, and the like. Like Ledgestone is a, an event that you kind of just assume it's going to be the Ricky Paul Eagle like those kind of guys win, winning that event for mm-hmm. whatever reason. Is it Northwoods Black or whatever like? Whatever combination it is, it seems like it's kind of like a world. Like it's almost like a major. That that and it, I mean, it's got a payout that's rivals some of those big tournaments. So maybe it's that too. That those top guys just care more about it. But for him to take that down, it wasn't last year. It feels like it was so long ago, but I think it was last year. Um, but and like maybe that was really his only big moment last year. Um, obviously, his only big win, but. Um, I think that speaks a lot to what he's capable of because it's like you don't just pop off and win Ledgestone. Like, it typically doesn't happen. No. You I, usually have to be at a very high level for 
those two courses together really it, it asks everything of a complete game you can't be just like a 600 foot hyzer donkey and you can't just be a touchy woods guy you have to really have it all and you have to show up and do it but again on the kind of sponsorship side of it i do i don't know if this is like new to this year but a lot of the like influencer deals like the mm. is it bedanza I, i've never heard of them until this year i saw him on the simon what was it when he when he beat him for simon line grip bag anyways that he i think it was infinite signed him yeah I saw and that. it's like wow. i don't know if he plays any tournaments but yeah. he puts out a lot of content and obviously gets enough views but um just a lot of these like youtube or instagram guys and it uh, and it makes sense honestly because it's like they're making more content than anybody on tour or most people on tour because they're touring and playing events and these guys literally just go out every day and make content yeah they they make it like a professional influencer that was disc golfing for the first time has so much more value than a lot of these people yeah. even like i don't know if they're throwing disc mania or if they're on the team now but i saw a shared story of an account called ditzy chicks disc golf and it's not a great throwing player and a name that i wouldn't associate with sports <laughs> in any way is, possible is it just some blonde like fit yeah yeah i think i've seen it and i think it was today that they had a story up Matt, Matt's looking it up right I'm now. sure that like one of their reels has the combined views of my entire That's Instagram. Right, yeah. But yeah, like it, it, it is sad that you can throw money at or a product at like allocate more of your, um, your budget to people who are just YouTube, like not even professional players in the sport and get more of a return out of it. Well, like amateurs are the ones buying all the discs, right? Like the amount of money spent by people in their first like two or three years in the sport is way more than people who have been in the sport for five or 10 years. So like those are the people you want to sell discs to. And like um, Anthony Bodanza, he was like a guy that was like, I'm going to get a van and I'm going to drive around the States and I'm going to disc golf every day and I'm going to learn how to play disc golf and I'm going to get to a pro tour event and I'm going to make it onto the pro tour and you can follow my journey. And so like he, it's got him learning and improving and, but it's also got him like going through his disc collection and trying to put together ideas for a bag and like. That's half the fun of being a recreational disc golfer is like, well, oh, what am I going to put in the bag today? It's not like which one disc am I going to swap into my tournament bag that I've been using all season. It's like, why don't I try this one again? I haven't thrown it for like six months and I'm a better golfer now. So you get to sort of follow vicariously through like the funnest part of disc golf. And he's 988 rated and he uh, cashed in a whole bunch of tournaments last year. 2500 bucks roughly US. In MPO, so he's Another. he's not bad, but he's you know he's gonna get his lunch eaten on the pro tour, but like the the value that he brings from an entertainment perspective is more than eighty percent of the pro tour. To be totally honest, yeah, <laughs> who um, like who on the pro it. tour has really interesting YouTube content? Like five or ten people, yeah, three yeah. people. That's about it. Um, but I also saw Joey Tamale. Playing the mm -hmm. tour, signed with MVP. Yeah. But that's where, like, it is getting to a point where, and I mean, I'm sure he's, like, put in the work to... He's also, I'm, like, 1,000 rated, isn't yeah, he? Yeah. I think I've seen him on some wait lists, so I'm, not, I'm, I'm sure he'll get into a couple pro tours, um, but I'm not sure if he's, yeah, might be an A-tier warrior until he can get more qualified. He also just um, announced the Q series for the pro tour, and there's, like, six events that are going to earn Q points and go to a qualifier finale at a to-be-determined location. Um, so that, again, it's like almost mid-February. Weird that it takes that long. Like if somebody was really committed to, I'm not quite there to get a tour card or have the rating to get into all the pro tours, but I want to make i want to do everything i can this year to then make it for 2025 i would have liked to see that information come out a little bit earlier as they ha they had announced that it was going to be this way no silver series just this q series but 
That was a long time ago that they announced that. And they just now gave out the dates of the events. Max, so. I got a notification about it like three months ago on my uh, disc golf scene. I don't know what you were <laughs> doing. <laughs> We, um, hey, let the Disc Golf Pro Tour know that the Canadian Disc Golf Tour should be a qualifying series. We approached them yeah. uh, over I a year ago to make the there's... first Canadian Disc Golf Tour a qualifying series. And uh, they really like the idea of the qualifying series. <laughs> they just forgot so, to put us in it this what's year. What's the Ontario? Diameter Open. And that's the one that it's on the same, same weekend, weekend as, as Canadian, Canadian Nationals. Nationals. That is so brutal. That is unreal. Where, where is Diameter Open? What course is it? Hot, Hot Goat. Hot Goat. Fort, Fort, Goat. Fort Hope. Fort Hope, Ontario. Fort Hope, Ontario. You know who that is? That's Daryl. I'm pretty sure. Yep. Yeah. That's gross. Daryl, if you're listening, that's gross. <laughs> I get I think, it. And here's the thing. is is, is I don't blame Daryl. Because he had I, no choice. I, I don't sure. blame Daryl and I don't blame um, Dennis either because... They were planning two A tiers on opposite sides of the sides of the country, and for whatever reason, it I don't know if there was just not enough bids or for nationals or or what, but um, you know you're you're planning your event for it to be an event, and it's nice to have the options of going to these two A A tiers at a time when the disc golf pro tour is on a break. So that's why that day was chosen by both tournaments, yeah. and then Dennis gets nationals and all of a sudden it becomes a bigger issue um i know for us here at park pro we're kind of working working through this ourselves of trying to get to trying to find a way to get to both but um at this point we just don't know how it's going to work so i mean and i'm sure there's other people that are thinking the same thing and, and the fact that the fact that uh the event in port hope is a usdgc and throw paint qualifier um, and then Canadian Nationals currently is, and I know there's there's talk of hopefully possibly getting it, but um, who knows? I mean, it is uh, if it's sponsored by Innova, so I, I think it kind of makes sense. But um, you know, the biggest tournament in Canada, and and I'm sorry, no no offense to Hope Go, but the biggest tournament in Canada is not part of this Q series, and they they chose this one because it's out east, and uh, I think they're gonna get more. Or more attention, I think, because it's on the way. The, the Pro Tour is out that way already at that point. So I don't know. It's it's interesting. Um, I'd say personally, for you know, I think it's a little bit questionable, but I mean that's just kind of how it goes. So. It's I weird that it's like one of those on the way events too. Like if the idea is not to have Pro Tour touring players play in these Q qualifying events, like it's the yeah they're not supposed to be there playing. It's supposed to be people that are trying to get it it's not like the silver events where they're like well let's get some top touring pros in there like the whole idea is that it's not pro tour current pro tour I, players i don't know if it's it, like i don't i think like anybody can play it still i think it's just you only earn points if you're not if you don't have a tour card so i don't know how that works but i just i just hate this clashing thing where it was the same i noticed a lot in sweden or in europe and it, like I think it even happens this year, where two European events, because they had like the Prodigy Pro Tour, which was essentially just Finland, they had the European Pro Tour, and then they had the PDGA Europe Tour. And it's just like, there's enough weekends in the year for everybody to get their tournaments done. And like, you shouldn't, in, like, especially when it's just A tiers or B tiers, it's like... Canada has six A tiers a year. It's not six. I said that earlier. It's but, more than okay. It's like fifteen or something like that. Thirteen. I'm going to jump in on this too because what they've done is nationals is always the biggest travel tournament of the year. Even as recreational players, it's your disc golf vacation. You go see somewhere new. EI Thunder Bay. Now it's here. And what have you done? You've put a DGPT event in the largest disc golf population in the country in Ontario, and those people will go there instead of going to nationals. Dennis will not be able to showcase. What, from what I've heard last year was already a fantastic event, an elevated version of what they had previous because of this goofy scheduling. And like missing, like missing nationals, I think like I would love for everybody to say national, I would rather play nationals than this Q series event. But if I'm Kalen yeah. or any of those guys, Kalen, Joe, the guys that you saw from Ontario are not coming to nationals. 
But even so, even if they weren't from there, if they were from Vancouver, any of the guys that are like fringe, do I want to do this full time? Do I want to try to make it to the pro tour? Q series, maybe you play one event, do really well, you get a, tour, a silver tour card for the next year. Not like, even uh, that, the different like variety and breadth of the of the eyes on you there. Yeah, it's such a bigger opportunity now for you to get noticed for at any. And like this is obviously the first time they've done this kind of Q series thing so you never know what one opportunity can turn into um so like yeah i'm scared now for nationals that a lot of people are just gonna say you know what i'm probably gonna get my more worth out of or like there's just the potential is so much higher of if if it is somebody striving to go to the pro tour or even just wanting to know where they where they match up to these guys. Um, yeah, I hate that, that it's the same weekend. Because it's going to take from both I both think, tournaments. Yes, I, yes and no. I agree to a certain point, but I think that's where, I mean, I think that's where Matt and I are really trying to focus our attention is we're not just, tr we're trying to bring more attention to Canadian disc golf. And I think, you know, it's our job to to make sure that Canadian Nationals gets the attention that it deserves. and. You know, while this Q series and and the Disc Golf Pro Tour, you know, that's uh, I mean, it's it's easy to want to to point your direction in that yeah, point to that direction. But I don't know. I just think that you know the spectacle that that Dennis is going to put on there and the experience, especially like how well it was received last year, and then not only that, but you know, our hopefully our presentation can also bring more people and, and attract more people. So as it should, because. Um, you know, to get on our coverage and, and have it be a part of the Canadian Disc Golf Tour. That's what we really want to emphasize as a, a selling point for Canadians that are trying to make that next step. You know, yep. you're going to get the attention on Canada's biggest stage at, um, yeah, fantastic courses like we've talked about for the last two episodes. So, yeah. yeah. And like, don't get me wrong, I'm going to go to Clearwater and play nationals, but think of somebody also. Is it guaranteed that um, that Q Series one is a. Is DGC qualifier? Yes. Yeah. So it's like Daryl and Indivo. Time, time ticks down. You don't have a D US DGC spot. Or it's like Thomas or even Casey. Like if they're getting down to that time of the season where it's like, you know what? It would be nice to get a US DGC spot. And they look at the registration and it's like, I could probably post a US DGC spot at that tournament. And it's like, obviously, like in my head, I would think a national title would mean more to. Uh, Casey and maybe even Thomas, but it is that you don't want to put that question in somebody's head where you're, you have to choose between. And like, if they had won this Q series event, it's like, I don't think that like if you would just put win versus win, um, I think most people would pick a national title over the Q series, even if it does mean USDGC spot, but is it okay? Then you go down to the next few like tiers of players, and it's like, all right, where do I value? Like, where do I want to put my value in? Do I want to race well at a national event, or do I want the potential of, yeah, pro tour um, potential or USDGC potential? It's just, yeah, an unfortunate timing thing where if it was just one weekend apart, then somebody who really cared could play to both of them. So yeah, don't like it. Yep. It's tough. I think being in like mid September, it might've been tough to get some of those players anyway, even if like it, uh, there weren't all these bells and whistles, like some of those players might've stuck around and just played the Ontario A tier anyway. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's tough to ask everybody to fly across the country. So I imagine that it will still be very well represented by Western Canadians. And there's a lot of those. And it'll still be like the big event to go to and people will come from Winnipeg and all around the country still. And um, Not only that, yeah. but like Oregon, California, it's closer for anyone, any of the players on the West Coast yeah. that might not want to make that trip out east. So. Bless yeah. your optimism, but I still think it's gross because it's the first time oh, I we've think it's had. It's still gross. It's the first time we've had nationals out west forever, and then they put this giant speed bump in the way, right? Yeah. How many years was it? Three, four years in PEI. Then Thunder Bay, we finally get our chance, and they're like, "No, let's put this giant distraction that's gonna." Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yep. It's a. 
gaff. Got the big mads right now. Yeah. No. And like I didn't know about this. I, I knew about this tournament, didn't check the dates, um, didn't know it was a USGC qualifier, but like just every every downside is there to go against nationals. And I do hope a lot of people do make the choice to play nationals instead. Um, no offense to the other tournament, but I just think a national tournament should be held at the highest standard and it should give everybody a chance to play that <laughs> event or just don't give anybody any other reason. That reason, yeah. yeah. Like whether or not enough people have variable schedules that, oh, okay, a wedding or something's happening this weekend, I can't make nationals this year. But for it to just be picking one tournament over the other, both tournaments are going to lose. But there will be yeah, a winner at we'll each one, so it's also a yeah. win-win situation. Yeah. Well, actually, has anyone actually played the course for the diameter other than me? It needs a full rebuild to actually host an event of that caliber too. So that will be interesting to see what, because it'll get all the global media attention, right? To see what kind of course that they're going to showcase. Because if we think back to the Discmania Open, they got a lot of flack for the course that was played. And that, that course for the Discmania Open is twice the course of this one. I do wonder, like, I don't think they've, announced whether or not they they're going to have live cover like i don't think it's going to be the same as the silver series last year like i don't mm -hmm. think dgn is going to be live streaming the q series no they're for no, sure not. you don't think, think they're so. going to do post produced either though i mean unless it's central coast or like i don't think i think it's just going to be it's like the farm league like it's connected to the pro tour but they're not putting the same the same kind of uh production into it mm. they'll probably advertise it on their social media but i don't think they're doing yeah dgn coverage or, or even the person that qualified like because we also get beat up with you know um american pros that are on the fringe of qualifying for you it's dgc coming up to tournaments like foxwood and you know bc open in the past yeah. and this is a place we're going to get a dgpt pro and i'm going to look really quick uh, Big Germ is going to get his USDGC spot. Oh, no, wait. He's already got one. He's got his lifetime. So this is the hardest layout. It is labeled by whoever did the layout as double black diamond. Very long, very technical. Uh, there is 188 foot hole, 243 foot hole, 220 foot hole, 270 foot hole, 256 foot hole. And the par fives are like 600 feet. Someone's going to come up and shoot. 22 Seven, down. Surely they'll, they're going to change the course. I'm, I'm hope sure Daryl's going to be spending some time this summer doing that. We'd like to thank our sponsor for today's episode and all episodes of Northern Flights Disc Golf Park. It's a unique disc golf course concept developed in Finland in 2005. It is based on the idea of building sports facilities in an environmentally friendly way. Disc Golf Park provides great experiences for players of all skill levels from beginners to professionals. Our main ideology is to introduce disc golf to new audiences. There are several options to suit any kind of course, and all official disc golf parks include professional and safe course design, disc golf park pro targets, tee pads and tee signs, and an info board to welcome players to your course or your podcast in some cases. The disc Golf Park World Concept consists of multiple courses designed for different types of players. Multi-golf is a new fun activity for the whole family, and in multi-golf, three forms of golf are played, foot golf, disc golf, and park-style pitch and putt. School Disc Golf Park offers students a new and exciting form of exercise for the physical education class. A course suitable for schools can be designed even in a small area, for instance, a schoolyard. Furthermore, the cost of school disc golf parks are lower than those of regular disc golf parks. They also offer private and group lessons or clinics, and for more information, check out the website at discgolfpark.com and request a quote today. Um, I do say I do want to say that uh, if we if we ever got a disc uh, disc golf park style um, info board for the, uh, how we want to lay out our podcast, we'd be playing Safari layout every yeah, single think, podcast. Think the same thing. <laughs> we're we're teeing off from yeah. across the street. We're uh, wading into lakes. We're all over the exactly. place. Exactly. 
All right. Uh, some news and notes. Uh, well, actually, first, let's let's start with the big one. And we were just talking about maybe maybe doing uh, some sponsorship announcements. But Gander Disc Golf shut down. This is some big news. Uh, this came across uh, our table uh, last week. Uh, we didn't mention on last week's podcast, but I don't know. What do you guys think of this? This is kind of a interesting thing. It's big, big retailer shutting down. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's just... Again, like kind of with the sponsors where it's like, is it just the market kind of plateauing um, or is it having to compete with Ace Runners and Top Link or any of the other, like, I don't know if it's the location of it. And like, I don't even know the details of why they shut down. So maybe it was just business decision. Didn't, didn't want to continue. Um, but unfortunate, obviously, you would like to see those kind of projects flourish in Canada, but for whatever reason, they, it seemed they got a good turnout for the, uh, the sale that they had at the store. I think Matt sent us a little clip of all it the people that were packed in the store. And it was right after yeah. opening. Yeah. People love that 40% like Black off. Friday deal. Yeah. yeah it's, it's a real a, shame. It is a real shame. It was a, it was a really nice brick and mortar experience. Like as far as disc golf stores go, it was as good as any that I've been to. Um, yeah. I think from what I understand, I think they were just one of the investors was looking to divest the the investor that was not necessarily a disc golfer that was just kind of in it as a like a a side investment i think they just wanted to free up some cash and do some other things and uh they weren't able to find a replacement so hard hard to say on the business side of things but obviously they couldn't find somebody to to buy in so yeah uh, since it's the the last day i want to say that uh they're going to be missed and calvin who was the more public facing member uh, of the gander team uh, deserves a big shout out. I know that he is uh, one of the nicest guys in the sport and he'll be greatly missed. I know he goes caddying for Casey for his tournaments and stuff like that. Uh, but my personal shout out goes out to him uh, because he, his company, and when I was at Top Link were at odds often as they were competitors. Um, but this year, there was a gentleman in a wheelchair I became aware of who was trying to find his first set of discs and he was in the Edmonton area. And uh, I went to the Gander site to purchase some stuff for him secretly. I do a lot of these sneaky things and don't talk about it. Um, but the first thing I got back from Calvin was, what else can I do to help this guy out? Do you think a disc retriever would help him in his condition? And he threw in some freebies and made sure it got to him right away. And he himself and their company also didn't use it for marketing or advertising. It was just out of the goodness of their hearts. And um, there's not enough people like that in the game right now. So. Yeah, I played the Edmonton Open this year, or last year, uh, and met Calvin there. Um, and I mean, I think it was just a B tier, um, but ran very well. Um, despite the mosquitoes, everything else was great. Um, and it was also really smoky that time of year. Um, it was crazy. But um, yeah, Calvin made that that tournament feel like an A tier, and... Um, I would hope that he still has that kind of an impact in the in the community, um, even though, yeah, the business side of it is yeah, not a part of the community anymore. But I think, yeah, I think he still has has a lot to offer as just his. I mean, just his demeanor as a tournament director. He had had a very open um, approach to it where was taking a lot of um feedback and um it was kind of funny because he was giving out cash for the cash prizes because he'd never never done it before and just assumed that's how everybody did it and everybody was just like wait why are we getting cash and it's like yeah i haven't gotten cash since like <laughs> early 2000s for pdj events but but it, it 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 was a really cool really cool tournament well very well run um and yeah i hope he he still has that impact on the sport yeah i mean uh, that's kind of what uh, the the wide opinion was that gander was elevating the sport in a lot of ways uh, at a lot of tournaments that they sponsored you know making it seem making it look more professional and and you know just upping the bar and uh, the the experience so um i'm there's a lot of uh, and they did a lot of support for especially in the edmonton area for leagues and tournament so um, they will definitely be, be missed that's for sure world needs more brick and mortar disc golf stores too there's something special about going in Feel having it in your hands fast. feeling it 
and like we talked about people discovering things on you just you you meet people to play with and friends and you get tips in these stores and you brush shoulders with people that are part of the community and that part even more so than the place to buy discs missing from Edmonton will probably be a really really big loss to the community we don't we don't really need that here though because I usually I just get Jesse to come over and bring a few discs over and we can Jesse would have the third biggest store in all of British Columbia, I think, in his basement. So, you know yeah. what? Uh, I'm I've cut my collection in half in the last three years with giveaway discs. And I think I'm at 180 given away, and I'm really hoping to get down to just the discs I throw or things that are special to me. So well, we have a tournament. Call me. I'll send you stuff. So you're not well, you're not giving realize. me that Devon Owens tank. You're not giving that one away to anybody, right? That was a, that was a personal gift just for you. I don't give away things that have been given to me for gifts. Okay, good. That's, we, that's on a special shelf. What a lot of people don't realize is that like our after hours or our after shows involves a lot of this stuff and like holding discs and comparing discs. Uh, brought over, I don't even know what, what they call this. It's the Cloudstone. Uh, the, the name on the production run will be the Spore, and it's like the the, the Disney Frisbee Disney. style disc. Yeah. The yeah. Disney so glitch. and then this is that glitch that uh, that we had died for us by uh, uh, Death Pod Disc Dies. Uh, go check in. Uh, we are. We'll we'll get to the giveaway in a minute. It's not a glitch, glitch, but it's a what. But we he brought it over so we could just compare them and and feel the difference. And uh, I'm excited to go throw these around at some <laughs> point. So really see how they uh, switch. But yeah, that's a little behind the scenes. He's got two discs beside him as well, saying, "Hey, check these out." Yeah, I guess if we want to talk about plastic for a little while, uh, I got a box from Disc Minute that had the spore in it. Which, if you're wondering if you've had a glitch in your hand before. Um, the spore has a slight dome comparatively. The wing is very, very, very similar. Uh, otherwise, hand feel very familiar. So uh, if you want something, I think the swirls and the cloud stone are just so pretty compared Beautiful. to what the glitch has been offered. So well, this but yeah, that glitch is that nice. the prettiest disc glitch ever been made. Let's not go there. This is more like what they <laughs> <laughs> also got the new S line TD out here. See it? It's got a very, very, very gradual. Uh, wing shape which tells me it's going to be quite flippy um and for, for 10 speed i was saying i think that the the wing itself is a little smaller so it fits in a small hand i haven't thrown mine yet but max has and maybe he'll tell you about how they fly um i mean i would say a little more stable than you would imagine um especially since all the s line stuff uh, now has been on the understable side um i would say looking at the numbers it's a little more stable than it looks. Um, I haven't hit any trees with mine yet, just been thrown in the field. Um, so I'm not sure how they beat in, but but yeah, very similar to the old, um, you know, the S line PD. Put or it up TD. to the camera, it's some, our viewers can compare. Oh, you... pretty unique. It kind of has that almost not lost it. Um, concave, or what is it, convex under wing. I was looking for words when I was describing the wing, and I <laughs> forgot all of my words. But yeah, that's exactly what it is. If you've seen like uh, Innova Eagles, the X mold versus the L mold, uh, like the X has the more concave scoop. It's more overstable. This one's got more of a convex uh, kind of feel, and that typically means high glide, mm. lower stability. Yeah, goes really far. And the new cloud breakers. Yeah. Got some sweet swirls on those, too. I guess it's the last cloud breaker. This is the last Swirly. cloud breaker. I mean, a cloud breaker is a cloud breaker that you've come to know and love, but these ones are extremely pretty. Let's see if I can mess Those with the swirls again. are crazy. Holy man. And they've they've kind of made fun of their own swirly runs in the past, calling them the not-so-swirly. You know, the, the old MD5s were like, yeah, the not-so-swirly MD5 run. But these swirls are the swirly. real deal. The real deal. That's yeah. the first swirly disc that I think you could call a swirly disc. Yeah, they really really uh leaned into the swirl but yeah this is almost like a like one of those kids lollipop sort of yeah. like actual spin swirl to it or is it bubblegum ice cream yeah that kind of thing um and if you're a cloud breaker fan these ones they're not flat but they're also not like big pop tops either they're somewhere in the middle i've also thrown mine um i think we got the same colors so that one was a bit more stable but the I had like a kind of a green teal one that was a bit flippier. So I would say that they're more, more of an understable run, at least the ones that I've gotten. So more of a th everyday thrower rather than those kind of, yeah, the horizon cloud breakers were pretty, pretty beefy. So this one more 
towards your everyday thrower. A lot of those Cloudbreaker 3s were, for like people like me, pretty workable right out of the box. Mm -hmm. and I, I think maybe like the superpower throwers weren't even throwing them because they were not quite stable enough out yeah. of the box. We do have some other news. Uh, Sofia Donikov finishes second at the uh, America Open. So um, awesome to see. Yeah. Second to only Jen, Jen Allen. Allen, I believe. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so it's nice to see her doing well with her new her new disc. She's down there in Arizona testing testing out her new Innova disc. So awesome to see her having some early early success in the year. Um, and then uh, we mentioned Nicholas Culver finishing first at uh, the Mexican what MX Open is that what it's called? I still forgot how. I don't know if it's the Mexican Championships. Yeah, they weren't it calling the it the Mexican Championships, but MX stands yeah. for Mexico. I think it was just the Mexican Open. Yeah, but um, but then uh, they recently released the skins match, and uh, Miguel did uh, pretty okay. So um, cash with a big boy putt. I don't know if you actually saw the clip. But I he didn't was, see the clip. He was downtown. Yeah. yeah. Go check well, it. Go check it out. Bro. Like, go check it out. Like, I'm gonna check it out right after this. Yeah, Miguel Alvarado. The man makes big putts. Fun to watch. There it does. And once you're done that, check him out at TCO coverage and uh, upcoming Falcons flight coverage. Yeah, always fun to watch Miguel play. So, we're we gonna shout out Chantel for her promotion oh, yeah. to the core team. That's a Prodigy it's a well? huge deal. We're Nico really LaCastro, Will Schusterick, Paige Pierce. Jeremy Coling, both Robinson brothers, and now Cannon, a Canadian. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's awesome. elite company. And she's got to be one of their better FPL players. It's her and Carolyn, um Carolyn Henderson. Carolyn Henderson, who I, may or may not be playing this. I heard year that name come up. I think it was a foundation. I don't know. Come at me in the comments for <laughs> at least you're not wearing the, the sweater. <laughs> but I heard them bring it up, and yeah, she's just like not playing anymore. Really? I don't know if it was an injury, but she was the one who like sold her house and yeah, bought an RV to yeah. commit to the tour. And somebody said she's just yeah, interesting. She's gone. She's what a tour. wild Two ride! Prodigy big guns just quitting disc golf in the last few years. Who was the lefty? Heather the Young. Lefty that was oh, Heather man. Young was also like this is purple a rising star that just snapping was gone from disc golf yeah well you do Crazy. hope it's nothing to do with the company and you it's just a coincidence the caroline henderson thing is weird though because she had such a huge like she was on like a feature card at waco or something yeah she made I'm not sure it's a prodigy event but. she made lead card like the week before that maybe out of las vegas i think i guess and then all vegas, of a sudden yeah. she was on feature card when she was not remotely ready for it and and played like it like she had a she was on the heater at, at a big yeah. open bomber course and then yeah. the tour like ate her up because she was an inexperienced rookie right and but like she has all the tools yeah just weird that it, it, it can go from yeah i'm going all in this year and maybe she just had higher expectations of herself than she should have or kind of put too much pressure on herself because I hate for somebody to just like put it all in one year and say i'm gonna get this out of this year and if i don't i'm out that's just not how i would look at it um especially I'm, I'm not sure how old she was i don't know if it was kind of a okay this is my last kick of the cat but i it, it didn't get no i think she i think on, she was pretty young and she that. came from an yeah. athletic background and like had i think the right approach to what she was doing and then i think it was part way through the year like she said i'm gonna i'm ditching the tour and i'm gonna rework my game or my form or something like that and then that's all. I'm interested to see what happens. Yeah, we'll see. And maybe it is just, uh, like, I get it. The tour life isn't for everybody. Like, it is a grind. And the driving, the travel, the everyday kind of struggle, it it does get a lot, uh, very taxing in, in at times. Um, and if you're not having th the success that you'd hoped, I would imagine people have some lonely days or some, some dark days. So I get it that, yeah, that spark can kind of fade pretty quickly but yeah i would hate for it to have just been just because oh didn't get the results I, I was looking for i do i do want to get back to Chantel though because Chantel is extremely talented and this year I, I don't know how many tour events she's committing to but i do believe she's committing to a good portion of the tour and i, I mean, think to get that level of sponsorship she has yeah. to be playing a lot more and 
I don't know. I'm I'm excited to see what she can do and how she how she uh, matches up with everyone. Yeah, on the I mean, I, I haven't followed her too much. I know she has a YouTube channel that's does pretty well. Yeah, Miss Frisbee's. If you if you didn't know, Miss Frisbee's um, on YouTube. But yeah, like I think, and it's like the Thomas Gilbert effect too. It's like just to have somebody on the tour, um, and obviously Thomas has had his success as well. He he won a tournament. Yeah, he just won a tournament recently too. For, I forgot to look that up. Or is it that one? Yeah, I can't remember seeing the field. I think it was just a B tier, but it was some somebody. I think it was Stat Mando posted it, and it was like Thomas's first year or first win in the states since that Goat Hill. Yeah, tournament. I think making a streak of I don't know. Anyways, congrats he to He usually terrorizes Florida every offseason. Yeah. Maybe not last year, but the year before. Okay, he, won, he, he won, won like the well. Kane Hawk. And yeah. All right. He won like two or three. I don't know. what. But that was like two was years about. ago. That was when he was still with Prodigy at that point. Even. Maybe. But I just know that like he, he always goes on these absolute tears in Florida. And yeah. you're like, this is Thomas's year. He's winning a major. Plays really well at Vegas because it plays doing his game. And then. Yeah. And then things level out a bit. But, but, but yeah, I hope Chantel. If she is playing a lot of events, what I would imagine, because she's getting that promotion, um, I would hope that that inspires. And the same with Sophia and um, all the rising uh, talent in Canada on the FPO side, that it does inspire the the kids, specifically the junior girls divisions, mm -hmm. to st stay at it. And like, because when you see somebody make it from Canada or even just be on the tour, then you're like, oh, that's possible. Where if you just see a bunch of Americans, it's like there's no connection of, okay, this is how I get to there. I play these events. I get this good. Boom. I'm the next Chantel. I think it's a, all part of, yes, Badinsky, of the bigger, like, bigger growth puzzle. We, we opened the show talking about the Canadian women's event. And like I said, a mother and a daughter go out to play and mom's doing it so they can have exercise for their children. But that kid gets into disc golf and they have someone... It's from their country that they can look up to and that keeps them in the game or gets them into their next tournament or yeah. gets them practicing. And it's, it's so good for us. Mm. Right. We do have a giveaway, one giveaway for one of these discs. We're keeping one of them. Um, these are absolutely gorgeous. This from Death I'd buy death putt putt disc dies. Disc dies. I've got, I've got yeah. a uh, Berg X on order with them. Yeah. Go check them out. Um, they do. He does commissions. And uh, it's, yeah, just he just does some amazing work. All right, so to win this one, you had to join the Discord, follow Death by Disc Dies, and comment, uh, tag a friend in the uh, Instagram post. So I've got our giveaway list here. Um, and as always, patrons are automatically entered to win in our draws. Um, and they obviously, if they do the requirements, they get a bonus entry. So uh, it's a good time to join the patron. For as little as a dollar fifty a month, I think so I've got a drum roll ready here. Sorry, yeah, yeah. patreon.com. Head, head over patreon.com slash park pro, uh, and uh, yeah, we we really appreciate all, appreciate all the support we can get. All right, all right. Je Jesse loaded uh, up a, a drum sound effect here on the soundboard, so here I'm going to nice. give you the drum roll. Ready? All right, Jesse, pick a number. Thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong drum. Oh, roll. Wrong drum. <laughs> you listened to the pod last time. I haven't. That's the exact number I picked last week. Weird. Oh no! Is that gonna be the same person? No, I, no, no. I, I'm, I'm uh, we're gonna resort them just to make sure it's <laughs> uh, so we're just gonna sort this uh, by randomize, um, and so I'm randomizing it I made now. Work. I'm number sorry. thirteen. Eric Fast. Oh, friend of the show, <laughs> patron supporter. So uh, congrats to Eric Fast. You won yourself a Parked Pro what? Um, beauty amazing yeah great disc uh yeah I don't see the difference. Take, he's gonna throw that difference. thing 400 feet for sure Thank yeah you, eric and your music is sounding great by the way yeah. i didn't know, I know eric is making electronic about. music and what? posting it uh, on instagram i think you should check I it out i know that once again death putt disc dies head over there he does commissions and um yeah thanks for all your support um we will we'll have a giveaway on the next one 
Uh, but uh, the only requirement is that we are going to just straight up pick from the Discord channel, just one user. So head over to our Discord channel, join the chat. We're also gonna we're gonna open up a channel for uh, comments on the pod, and if uh, you want to, you want us to, we're gonna open up a discussion. Uh, pre-podcast and then we can bring that up while we're doing our podcast and, and can talk about some of these things that are going on a lot of chatter in the uh the discord already so join the discord it's worth it and i was just told that i'm boss of the discord today so i'd really love to get some more things going in there like a park pro game night where we can give away some stuff some fun party games together chat about disc golf have a lot of fun so keep your eyes peeled for that too yeah now's now's the time man eric fast <laughs> multi-talented dude that sounded great. Oh, you're playing Eric's music. We were yeah. talking about Discord game night. I thought it was going to be Wii Sports theme song or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, get on the Discord. Uh, join. Join fast. Join Eric fast. Join. Uh, yeah, Discord? Well, now. I think he's on the Discord. Yeah. Surely. Is he on the Discord?